The prison program you're about to view consists of strong subject matter such as rape, gang fights, stabbings, police corruption, and extortion. Due to the nature and language of the program, viewer discretion is advised. Prison X is back with new and more shocking episodes. The stories that are retold are 100% real-life experiences from ex-cons that made it out of prison alive. These untold stories of slashings, rapes, assaults, extortion, and gang violence cover penitentiaries as far north as upstate New York to the Midwest states of Indiana, Texas, and Detroit, southern states like Georgia, Alabama, Memphis, and Florida to as far west as California. These are the stories that have taken place in jails all across America. Welcome to Prison X. Yo, you already speaking to Will Crandell, a.k.a. Abnormal, a.k.a. Abdullah, federal inmate 60296053. You already. Um, I've been in a couple spots. You know, when you first start off, you're going to be in MDC, Brooklyn. From there, you're going to travel. Back to town, when I got locked up, it was something called diesel therapy. They wanted you to fucking tell. So if you told, you ain't have to go through diesel therapy. But if you didn't tell, who knows who you end up. I went to Oklahoma, big redneck. As soon as you come off the plane, they, you shackled up. They talking about, tell them about the crack line, boss. The crack line is when your motherfucking pants is sagging. That's what that crack line is. They saying, if they seeing your crack line, they gonna give you five to 10. Five to 10 minutes of an ass whooping while you handcuffed up, you know what I'm saying? So that's what that was about. From Oklahoma, I ended up coming back down to um, PA, Philly, where niggas don't like New York people. Um, from Philly, I ended up doing most of my time in Jersey, specifically Farrington and Fort Dix. I did five years in Farrington. I did three and a half years in Fort Dix. Farrington was a crazy experience. It was a lot of DC, Baltimore, Philly dudes out there. You already know they don't like sun. They don't like hearing your what up my G. They don't like hearing peace, Lord, and all that Brooklyn swag that we got up here. Why? Because we came out there, we sold a lot of drugs, and we fucked a lot of hoes of theirs. So they ain't really like us, you know what I'm saying? My prison experience is locked up in Farrington, medium high, correctional facility. Um, I don't really remember the day, man, but the story was so crazy, man. So you got this dude, he told another inmate to suck his dick because the inmate wouldn't give him an extra piece of chicken. You know, fried chicken in the feds happen on like maybe on a Thursday, you're gonna get that fried chicken. You know what I mean? People want that fried chicken because you're only getting fried chicken once a week. And that fried chicken kind of reminds you of that street life, you know, that Kansas, that KFC, that Popeye. Well, anyway, he asked the, he asked the dude, you know what I mean? Let me get an extra piece of chicken. We on the line. Dude like, I can't do that, fam. Keep it pushing. Fuck you mean you can't do that? You know who I be. Yo, right now ain't the time, fam. Suck my dick if you want that. It's whatever. It happened in the cafeteria. That's where it started at. About a month passed by. We on our cell block now because the dude who said he wanted an extra piece of chicken and the dude who told him to suck his dick, we all lived on the same block, which is C right. You know what I'm saying? So we chilling. You got the TVs and all that. You got the microwaves on to the side. So we in a common area. So this dude... The dude who told him to suck his dick, he's sleeping, he's chilling. When I mean sleeping, he not sleeping, but he watching TV, whether it was WWF or, or BET. I don't really remember all that, but the bottom line is he looking up, he watching TV, he forgot he told a dude suck his dick about a month ago, not about a week ago, about a month ago. Homie boiling baby oil with water in the microwave, cooking it up about an hour. Like, yo, what up? Let me get in the mic. Chill, son, I got this, be, yo, be easy. I'm cooking something, cooking, cooking, cooking. About an hour go by, motherfucker take uh, the, the, the boiling liquids, shit bubbling, glug, 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 glug. just tiptoe over to where the dude at, dude, he, he looking up, the TV's is up high. So he looking up, he ain't worried about right, left. He forgot about what he told a nigga in the child hall. Out of nowhere, they, mm, right on his face, all you see is 
Motherfucking skin just leaking off. You see the bone gristle. Motherfucking bone gristle of the nigga face leaking off. The screams was horrifying me. I could, I could never duplicate what I heard that man screaming like who had that 190 with that baby oil and that microwave for an hour all on his skin leaking. 190 is, is like 190 degrees of water. You know what I'm saying? A lot of jails, we don't have microwaves. We got 190. So you hit the 190, that's how you make your soup. That's how you make whatever you want to cook with. That's the most. But we happen to have that 190 and that microwave. So he took the 190 and put it in the microwave with the baby oil and cooked it for about an hour. So you got that the, a heat that I, I can't even tell you, but you know water and oil don't mix. But it do the skin crazy. What, it, what 190 and, and water do and with baby oil to the skin is something that you never want to see, man. Um, the two other things besides watching your mouth, that's number one. The second thing that I think is most important for a lot of people to, to, to get in their mind is that you have to mind your own business. Mind your own business. What that mean is, I told you before, if, if, if you was following me in this whole scenario, man, when a person got burnt on their face, I didn't stick around to watch out what happened to his, his facial features. I seen that, I learned from it, watch your mouth, and I slid off because I had to mind my business. Now, when I came home, I had to mind my business again. Who you think you are? How you think you're going to sell drugs, kill niggas, murder niggas, then come home and be a productive member of society? They're not going to accept you. So you got to mind your business. And I started my own business, Kinetic Fitness. As well, AKA Abnormal, Prison X, it's my story. From creator and producer James Billings. Next time on Prison X. Uh, I had an incident one day where I was walking down the hallway, bringing one of the adolescent houses back from lunch, and there was another house crossing us in the hallway, which usually isn't a great idea, but it happens sometimes. And one of the bloods from my house saw some crips from another house bend down, pull a razor out of his rectum, chase the kid down. Interested in telling us your story? Email us at industrymuscle at gmail.com. Mm -hmm.